That man Fredo, highly intelligent. Love the way he just dodged those questions that he knew wasn't really smart for him to answer. Man, that's a nice way to maneuver around somebody's pointless questions. But with that being said, kick that intro for me one time. What's going on today, folks? It's your boy, King K.O., back with another video. And for today's topic, well, uh, we got to discuss Fred O'Bang, man, and his Breakfast Club interview. Then we also got to discuss Shea Gillies Alexander, you know, and also the Oklahoma City Thunder in general, you know, and what just happened with them uh, and the whole snitching thing they just pulled. But yeah, man, first off, I want to say this. Fred O'Bang, bro. Shouts out to you, my boy, man. You, you, you deserve a round of applause. No cap, no cap. The way that he handled those questions, whenever they was trying to bait him and set him up, you know, to basically incriminate himself, that was, man, that was a thing of beauty, bro. He, he maneuvered around them so well. You know, you had uh, DJ, I don't know what dude's name is. I'm sorry, y'all don't really watch Breakfast Club. Only really watch this interview. Uh, the DJ, the light-skinned dude, he pretty much, man, uh, asked Fredo what it, you know, the whole beef situation started about. And Fredo maneuvered that around and started talking and saying, basically, beefs start about anything. You know, somebody can mug somebody, somebody can do, you know, whatever. And he just completely uh, disregarded the question that dude asked him. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, uh, Charlemagne the guy was asking some really good questions, man to get, uh, you know, Fred O'Bang to open up about, you know, his relationship with Boosie. And it brought out, you know, some topics that I think was pretty interesting, you know, just the fact that uh, Fred O'Bang ran into Boosie at the airport, you know, air, uh, Boosie gave him his number and whatnot, which led to Fredo eventually calling him and Boosie never answered, you know what I'm saying? But then he also spoke up and uh, elaborated on what Boosie meant when Boosie made that video saying there's some things that he had to tell him. Well, basically, Boosie was just explaining to him, you know, how the relationship with TBG fell out. You know, Fredo also spoke about how they was cool all the way up until Fredo went to jail and then told us, you know, TBG was actually started in the 90s, you know. So he, he cleared up a lot of things for us. But first, before we get into this, I just want to say shout out to the ones, you know, who sent me cash apps, man. You know, supporting the channel and showing me love for my birthday. You know, everybody who showed me love and support. You know, I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, I, I can't tell y'all how much I appreciate the love, man. You know, it, it, it truly means a lot, man. And if y'all want to support the channel, you know, to help us grow, you know, my cash app tag will be in the description of every video and also on uh, right here on the screen. Yeah, y'all go mess with that, especially if you uh, vibe with the channel and you want to show your support and show that you're really rocking with the community and everything we got going on here. You know what I'm saying? Help your boy out, man. You know, I'm grinding it out for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get these videos kicked out and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? The more you support, the more we can post daily. The more time we have, actually. You feel me? But I'm going to go ahead and drop this Breakfast Club interview for y'all. You know, I'm going to try to play as much as I can without getting a copyright. I might have to uh, pause and just chime in a little bit. You know, that way uh, YouTube don't copyright us and make me edit that out. But yeah, with that being said, let's get to it. Believe that. That whole song actually was about a lot of things in my life because like, a lot of people don't know when I was in jail, I had a certain certain people from a certain side that not supposed to f with me and I don't not supposed to f with them mm -hmm. wanted me to be a part of them rap wise. Mm -hmm. And now that y'all hear that, I want y'all to uh, remember that and keep that in the back of y'all head because I'm gonna play this other clip. You know when he was talking about 
you know, people from the other side, you know, trying to lock in and vibe with him and DM him and telling them, you know, all these different crazy things. But y'all, y'all, y'all keep that in the back of y'all head. I know. You know what I'm saying? Is this a Baton Rouge thing? Yeah. yeah. And I was, you know, I'm loyal to the point to where, like, I done turned down lots of money, like, to leave my people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but, would it be leaving your peoples or is it you gotta leave, leave, down, leave, my, leave my organization and being a party organization hmm y'all think about it I wonder who would have had the bread to pay somebody like Fred O'Bang to leave his side and come to their side y'all go ahead and think about that and tell me who y'all think that could have been you know what I'm saying don't you think at some point um, if, if y'all did come together in Baton Rouge it would stop a lot of the street beef like, like what makes one side not be able with the other side is it too far gone yeah where does that start where does the beef start from um most beef starts from like when you especially when we're young they just don't know no better and just like literally we'll see each other inside a store and if you stand now too if hard, y'all here right there y'all heard Charlemagne and the dj ask him you know basically what makes you know you guys really stop messing with each other you know, basically trying to get him to incriminate himself, come out, you know, speak about everything that go- that went on, you know, all of the rumors that are up in the air and just uh, clarify them to be truth. You know, even if, you know, they were true or whatever. man, why would y'all ask him something like that on a, a, a broadcasting station that is broadcasted a, uh, across you know, the world and is on a YouTube platform that is so big that almost everybody in the world watches it. Why would y'all ask him something like that, you know, that you know he can't answer and you know could potentially put him in harm's way to have, you know, the people and in, in, in them boys in blue watching and paying attention and even bigger than that, you know, them dudes in the suits that come and take you away from your family and your lifestyle why would y'all play with this man like that? You know, how can y'all say that y'all here for the community when y'all doing things to get people wiped away? I just, I couldn't respect that. But the way the man answered the question, the way that Fredo reflected that question back, and then he smiled when he did it because he knew, and they knew too, they smiled also. Like, oh man, we thought we had him. You know, he twisted that back and did exactly what he was supposed to do with it. But I want y'all to check out this other little clip when he mentioned, you know, uh, dudes from the other side, you know, in his DMs and trying to, you know, uh, buddy, buddy and uh, click up with him. But yeah, y'all check it out. Then he used to be getting these lit artists who used to be in my DM, sending me videos and stuff how they love my music and stuff. And that, then they get with the ops and become an artist and they just so gangsta and bow. That's what they, they, as soon as they get over there, they turn gangsta and bow legged. Yeah. But I don't be tripping. I be congratulating. I be hoping to be, I be, I like to see niggas from Louisiana. I don't care if I don't, I despise your guts. I like to see a nigga do better in life. You feel me? But it's always wrong for me. Yeah, man. Like, I don't, I don't even f with nobody. I be the nicest ever. You heard me? I done grew my hair out. I done twist my I'm, I'm all on new vibes. You feel me? You know? Uh, leave me alone, bro. That's all I want. Just leave me alone, bro. What y'all y'all with me? You know what I'm saying? Don't fuck with y'all y'all with me. Oh yeah, I want some followers. I don't want no blood. That's all y'all want. Then you be, you can tell the who don't do nothing, cause they be the main ones. I do this to you and that to you, that to you on Instagram. Just going through their comments, picking my name. As y'all can see from that. I'm sure y'all got the same thing as I got at one point in time. You know, a lot of people on the other side used to uh, support Fredo and be in his inbox, you know, uh, big up in him. You know what I'm saying? And then they got signed with the op side and decided they was going to switch up on him. You know, that's that's kind of what I caught from it. But on the cool, man, uh, Fredo right when he say he don't be messing with nobody. He's trying to go up and enjoy his career. 
But yeah, man, let's go ahead and move on to this next part, though. Believe that. Next up, we got the Oklahoma City Thunder. And reports just came out that the Oklahoma City Thunder pretty much gave up uh, the whereabouts about a federal investigation that was going on. I'm not going to read the article for y'all, but I will post the article right here. It was posted by LawAndCrime.com. You know, it says Oklahoma City Thunder employees helped federal authorities identify a suspect in capital siege leading to uh, several charges. And I guess these are people right here, but I'll paraphrase for the ones who don't want to read it themselves. You can definitely stop the video and just look at it for yourself. Uh, pretty much, you know, the Oklahoma City Thunder had, you know, uh, this male that worked for them back in the days. And they seen the guy was one of the people that was involved with with a complaint that uh, Washington DC filed. And then they also seen that uh, a lady named Danielle uh, Nicole Doyles was also involved with the whole situation. So uh, I guess it was a federal investigation that went on for several weeks. And then uh, several Oklahoma City Thunder employees seen the investigation on the news and kind of started discussing it amongst each other, you know, as a whole. And eventually, I guess uh, they, they sent an anonymous tip to the FBI and let the FBI know that they pretty much know who those people was and identified them, you know, for the FBI and gave them, you know, basically the people's whereabouts. So that's kind of the reason why I say that, you know, the OKC ratted, you know, uh, they aired it all out on CNN, you know, and, and, and just kind of like got these, you know, got them caught up. Now, it, it's kind of it, it kind of uh, shocks me. Because, you know, the, the press around, you know, this whole situation was nobody would get in trouble for this and, you know, all this, this and that. But, you know, I guess they did. And also, man, just, just to think that someone within an organization uh, that is held to such high regard, such as the Oklahoma City Thunder organization within the NBA, uh, for them to have uh, two, not one, but two employees on their payroll who were involved with all of the rioting and, you know, just the, the radicals in general uh, down in Washington, D.C., that that kind of that's kind of flabbergasting. Like it kind of blows my mind, man, because if, if we want to be honest, you know, those radicals down there, you know, the ones that was rioting and destroying, you know, the state capital, we consider those people to all be racist, you know. We're not going to say that all Trump supporters are racist, but those definitely were. But let's go ahead and move on, y'all. Believe that. Next up, I want to talk about Oklahoma City Thunders forward, small forward slash, slash power forward, Darius Baisley. And Darius Baisley, we're going we just going to speak on briefly. Uh, Darius Baisley has been averaging 11.9 points. As you can see in his last game, he had 22 and 18, you know, in the game before he that. or at zero. But, I mean, he's still young, so he's going to have a lot of inconsistencies. But as you can see, he scored 13 before that. And then uh, another two uh, two, po two games where he had 18 points. So you can see that the talent is, is, is there. You know, the talent is definitely there. The potential is definitely there. You know, he's also averaging 7.4 rebounds, which is very good. You know, basically he's been a very good rebounder since his rookie year. Now, I want y'all to see these clips, and y'all tell me, even though the shooting percentage is terrible right now, y'all tell me what y'all think from these clips of, you know, just a few highlights and what he can do. Now, this isn't everything, but as y'all can see right here, you know, he goes up and he's very springy and can play defense. And as y'all can see right here, he also has some acrobatic layups. But this is my favorite play right here. See him pulling the ball down the court at six foot eight nine, and then just pulling up, you know, doing his little dribble move and pulling up for three. Man, that, that was a that was a beautiful shot. And also this, you know, just showing the athleticism, the way that he moved the ball on John Collins and just dunked that down. That was ferocious. Not to mention, you know, he could just walk right into a three. And I think Baisley's better when he's stepping into the three instead of pulling up, you know, or spotting up for the uh, three-point shot. And just look at that little sick little half crossover, and then he goes up and lays it up. Man, a dude has talent. You know, it, it, this young kid, look at that. Ooh, that step through was beautiful. And he's doing that a lot on a lot of different defenders. Baisley is really handling his business, you know. He's really developing at a good rate. You know, his athleticism is through the roof. Look at that, man. How many people in the NBA can really just get off of their feet so quickly and do that type of, you know, little half uh, 360? 
You know, then this right here, man, to dunk on Giannis, to dunk on a Greek freak like that, man, that, that was vicious. That was just flat out vicious. You don't dunk on Giannis. Giannis dunks on you. Everybody knows this. But yeah, man, let's go ahead and move on to Shay. I just wanted to briefly uh, show y'all Darius Baisley and touch on him right quick. Really, I'm just ready to take advantage of the opportunity I've been given. Um, and there's so many opportunities in this this game that I've been blessed to, to have in my first two and a little bit of years in the NBA. And I'm just thankful. So I think our focus is just me as, long, as, well, as well as the rest of the team just to get better every day. Um, I feel like we have so many young guys that, that right now in our careers, we just want to get better and, and eventually get to that next level. And that's our main focus. Shea Gillis Alexander is a phenomenal player. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I wanted to wait until around this time in the season to finally speak about him. You know, I was going to talk about him in the off season and tell y'all, you know, I know this is the year for a breakout season. But so many people spoke on it. I felt like that was already out there, you know. Now, I don't want to have a knock uh, on Lou Dort or Hamadou Diallo, you know, Isaiah Roby or any of the rest of the young players who are playing very well right now. But Shea Gillius Alexander is, you know, that team. He's literally the whole team. Now, I do feel like Darius Baisley and Lou Dort and Hami, you know, Isaiah, they all going to be a huge part of the team. You know, and Ty Jerome, how he's been playing in his uh, first two uh, NBA games this season. He's been great. You know what I'm saying? But Shea has been doing something that hasn't never been done. You know, he's averaging 23.2 points. Uh, he's averaging 5.3 rebounds and 6.3 assists while shooting 51% from the floor and 41% from three. He upped his best field goal percentage by literally 5%. He upped his field goal percentage from last year by 7%. Shea is phenomenal. I mean, this kid is box office. Like, he literally needs to be an all-star this year. I know that Oklahoma City is, you know, not a good team. Boy, they are a good team, but they're not a great team out west. You know, they're in a tough conference. You know, uh, they're in a southwestern division, which is a very tough division. You know, you got the uh, Dallas Mavericks, the Spurs, um, the Timberwolves. You got a lot of good teams, you know, in that division. So it's, it's, a, it's a very tough division to be in. But this other Oklahoma City Thunder are definitely holding their own, you know, to be a young team, you know, the third youngest team in the NBA. And Shea just made it to the athletic Sam Vicini's uh, top NBA young prospects. You know, this year he's uh, he's just well, he was already there, but he was outside of the top 10. He just jumped up six spots and he's in uh, he's basically the number five uh, on that on that list. You know, he passed Trey Young, he passed LaMelo Ball, he passed John ja Morant. And speaking of John ja Morant, I always thought that uh, Shea's game resembled John ja Morant's in a way. You know, just the way they move. You know, you can see the IQ on the court. Shea's just a more efficient player. Shea's the better scorer. You know, Ja just has the more jaw-dropping jaw um, plays. You know, his plays, his athleticism is so much more jaw-dropping that, you know, you will feel like he's the more standout player when in reality it's Shea. Shea's the better all-around player. He's great on both sides of the ball. He's great on offense and defense. And that's that's one thing that we need to speak about when we're talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder. They have a lot of young talent that is great on both sides of the ball. Like, you got Darius Baisley, who's a two-way player. Shea Gillis-Alexander, who's a two-way player. Uh, Lou Dort, who's a 3 and D. And I always told people that Lou Dort is great around the rim. He has great body control. He's a great finisher. You know, I felt like uh, Lou Dort was going to pan out and really shape out to be a... Uh, a great all-around player, Hamadou Diallo. He's he's a good defender, and he's also uh, picking up on that jump shot a lot better. His three-point shot is looking so much better. Uh, the mid-range, he picked up on that, so he's being a, a threat from all levels. He's a three-level scorer. Isaiah Roby's good on the defensive end, and he also worked on that jump shot, so he's looking a lot better. You know, they got a lot of good players that, that can do the three and D thing, you know, and not to mention, you still got Alexi Pokoshevsky coming up, you know, out of the G League, who is uh, looking like he's going to be a dead-eye three-point shooter. He just put up some monster stats the other day. You know, he had like 19 points and like uh, like 20 rebounds, uh, five steals, five blocks, 
uh, I think he had like uh, eight assists, eight or nine assists, just something monstrous. He had a monstrous game, man. No, he had 11 assists. It's just a monstrous game, man. And then you got Tao Melanin, who looks like he already has NBA experience. He looked like he should have been a lottery pick. Real talk. Tao Melanin was a steal in the second round of the draft. And I don't see anybody speaking about Tao as if he's just invisible. I think Tao's averaging around eight points right now. But he's he's definitely one of those, those uh, future young guards who can be, you know, a good piece coming off that bench. That can lead that second unit into, you know, um, a dominant position. You know, that OKC was last year with having like a Dennis Schroeder on the bench. And I feel like Hamadou Diallo really stepped up and filled out that uh, that hole and that role that Schroeder left. So overall, Oklahoma City, as constructed right now, is already, you know, heading in the right direction to be a great team with, 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 with what they have around them right now. And then you add into those 17 first round draft picks in the next, you know, six, seven drafts. And now you're looking at a dynasty type team. And not to mention, you know, they got another, what, 18 uh, second round draft picks. And if you see their track record on drafting in the second round and everything they picked up, you know, you, you, you see a team that is going to dominate. You see a team that's definitely going to dominate. This team is definitely in the greatest hands possible. You know, Sam Presti put them in a, a position to be uh, nothing but successful for years to come. And you just got to think, man, even in the future, you know, you never know where this team is going to go, man. They're looking at another, you know, a couple decades of being a dominant team. This might be the worst that this team is going to be, you know, for the foreseeable future, without a doubt. You know, this is the worst. If this is the worst that a team has to look forward to being, man, you know you in good hands. You know this. Shea put that work in. As you can see in these workout videos right here, I've been meaning to post these for a while, man. I just wanted to wait till the perfect time, and I feel like right now is the perfect time. Shea definitely has gotten bit visibly bigger when he's banging down low, when he's going up for a layup and he's banging down low. He's he, he's definitely he's definitely uh, a lot stronger. You can see, you know, and also when he's going into some uh, the uh, shot blockers chest, you can see that he's a lot more physical and those shot blockers are not absorbing the contact as well as they did, you know, against Shea and years prior. So you definitely can see that he put that work in on the upper body, you know, uh, his his leg strength and, and everything is looking a lot stronger. You know, he's He's looking a lot more athletic like he's just been working and just putting in you know work day in and day out during this shortened offseason man imagine if he had a full offseason probably would have came back a superstar for real i mean i'm not saying he's not because don't get me wrong shay is definitely a superstar i don't care what any of y'all say y'all can say it's too young and he putting up good numbers on a bad team no this kid is putting up great numbers and this team is, you know, still young, so it's figuring everything out, man. I hate that narrative that people just put up uh, good numbers on a bad team, man. There is some truth to that, but you still got to be a good player to put up 20 points a game in the NBA. Let's not get that twisted. But, yeah, man, with that being said, I'm out. Believe that.